Picture this, you spent four years and 300 grand on getting your bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering at a top 100 university. You did everything you were supposed to do. Get good grades, join engineering clubs, do internships, network with people, and prepare for interviews. All of your hard work paid off and you landed your dream mechanical engineering job. But after working for a year, you find out that working in the real world is totally not what you expected. You're struggling to meet critical critical project deadlines because you're making mistakes all the time, you have a bad relationship with your coworkers, you can't seem to get a promotion, and nothing about your job is straightforward like the homeworks and projects that you did in university. These are just some challenges that you probably have or will experience as an entry level or junior mechanical engineer. I even went through a period of lows when I first started out as a mechanical engineer, but those times really gave me an opportunity to reflect address my shortcomings, grow, and ultimately get to where I am today. While university only partially equips us with important technical skills and knowledge to solve challenging problems, this is only one out of many ingredients needed to succeed in industry. Having worked as a mechanical engineer in the consumer's electronics industry in Boston and Silicon Valley for over four years, I want to share with you three absolutely game-changing skills and several key insights that transformed my career as a mechanical engineer in today's video. If someone had told me about these things in university, I would have received way more job offers, doubled my salary in my first two years as a mechanical engineer, and most importantly, I would have loved my job way more. Now, the number one hard skill that changed my life as a mechanical engineer is Design for Manufacturability and Assembly, or DFMA for short. It's a mindset, a strategy and a set of principles that guide how we design products to be easily manufactured and assembled. Poorly designed products can lead to costly delays, production bottlenecks, and frustrated assembly teams. But when we apply DFMA principles, we streamline the entire manufacturing process, saving time and money for the company. So what exactly are these principles? It starts with simplifying designs, minimizing the number of parts, and standardizing components. Imagine a product with thousands of intricate parts, each requiring precision machining and assembly. Now picture the same product redesigned with DFMA principles in mind. Fewer parts, simpler assembly, and faster production. That's the power of this skill. Mechanical engineers design hundreds upon thousands of parts for a product, whether it's a smartphone, car, aircraft, or robot. In the early to mid stage of the product development process, we first have to test a bunch of 3D printed and CNC machine prototypes to determine if the part and system design are feasible. Competition is higher than ever before, so every company is trying to shorten their product development process and get products to market yesterday. I, of course, experienced this firsthand as a mechanical engineer where all of our project timelines were extremely tight. Because of this, we had to make split second decisions and had very little room for error. Unfortunately, prototyping is is just a very slow and expensive process by nature, and many of the local machine shops and 3D printing companies had these very long lead times and quoted these exorbitant prices. But luckily for me, I was able to get my parts made quickly, cheaply, and precisely using JLC 3DP. JLC 3DP offers the best industry-leading online 3D printing and CNC machining prototyping services. Simply upload your file for instant quote and place your order order anywhere, anytime. Choose from five 3D printing technologies, three CNC machining processes, a wide selection of materials, colors, and surface finishes, and they'll take care of everything so you can get the parts shipped directly to you in any country in as fast as three days. Here are several 3D printed electronic enclosures and miscellaneous parts that I had them print for me, and everything was delivered right to my doorstep, perfectly packaged and within specification. The best thing is they will automatically review your part designs for manufacturability issues and tell you exactly how to fix them. If you're working on a project and need affordable 3D printed or CNC machine parts fast, be sure to check out the link in the description below. Once you test out a range of prototypes and nail down the high level design, you'll need to start the detailed design of parts and apply DFMA principles. How you design a part will depend on many factors, one of which is the manufacturing process used to fabricate 
rotate the part. The same part that's 3D printed, CNC machine, and injection molded will need to be designed differently according to DFMA principles. Which manufacturing process you ultimately choose to make your part will depend on several key selection criteria such as annual volumes, product value, part geometry, required tolerances, and material. For example, your material choice will instantly rule out a good number of incompatible processes. Die casting can only be used with metals, injection molding can only be used with plastics or polymers, while CNC machining can be used with both metals, plastics, and even diamond. If talking about part volumes, plastic injection molding and casting are typically for high volume production, where hundreds of thousands or even millions of units are made per year, while CNC machining is traditionally for low to medium volume production, unless you're Apple who is an exception to every rule. So a low volume product could be a DaVinci Surgical Robot or Airbus 380, while a high volume product could be an iPhone or a bottle of Coke. Now you might be thinking, there's a billion types of manufacturing processes out there. Which one should I become an expert at? Speaking from experience, CNC machining, injection molding, casting, sheet metal forming, 3D printing, welding, and surface treatments are all great to know for product design. If you're a DFMA expert and you can design and optimize parts for several manufacturing processes, your employability is going to skyrocket, you're going to get more job offers, and it's going to be hard for your boss not to like you. One strategy I use to master DFMA is simply by focusing on a single process I was most interested in. It's very easy to feel overwhelmed if you try and learn everything at once. So for example, you can start off by familiarizing yourself with the underlying principle and theory behind plastic injection molding. Know how an injection molding machine works and the different parts of the actual mold like the core, cavity, gates, runners, sprues, parting line, and the ejector pins. Next, learn the actual process steps of injection molding like melting, clamping, injection, cooling, and ejection. Then try to understand the key parameters of the particular manufacturing process. So for example, for plastic injection molding, there's melt and mold temperature, injection pressure, and injection speed. Know how all of these parameters affect the part quality. Know what an undercut feature is and understand why a classic straight pool mold can't make it. Take it a step further and understand the various techniques used to create undercuts, such as side actions and bump offs. Understand what tolerances can be achieved, what draft angles are and how much to use, and limitations such as minimum and maximum wall thickness, as well as screw boss and hole diameter and height. Finally, brush up on the common defects for the process, such as short shot, sink marks, and warpage, and how to avoid them in your part designs. Now simply rinse and repeat for other processes like CNC machining and casting. I know better than anyone that it's challenging as a student to learn solely by reading a textbook or watching YouTube videos. So one of the most effective ways that helped me deepen my understanding of DFMA exponentially was doing a mechanical engineering internship and finding a design oriented research position at my university. The reason is this forced me to work with other engineers, machinists, and technicians in the machine shop and manufacturing plant. While their feedback was brutal and made me want to kill myself at times, I learned how they set up and operate CNC machines using G-code and CAM software, how to utilize different tools to make certain part features, and ultimately the best way to optimize my part designs for things like manufacturability, cycle time, and cost. Now, I've worked with plenty of engineers and what I've observed is not knowing anything about DFMA will make your life and job extremely miserable if you're a product design engineer. The parts that we design are constantly evolving in real time throughout the product development process. Dimensions, positions, and part features like holes, screw bosses, ribs, chamfers, fillets, are adjusted all the time as the overall system is finessed. When I say finessed, I mean the system design is optimized for fit, form, and function, and everything including PCB boards, screws, sensors, optical components, and cables are where they need to be in the CAD model. Typically throughout the mid to late stages of the product development process, every custom part that we design is sent off to suppliers for quoting, tooling, and DFMA feedback. Let's just say you design 
design a plastic injection molded part and sent the design to your supplier, but you forgot to add draft angles and included some undercuts. The supplier then comes back and says you need to add a one degree draft angle on all vertical walls and slightly modify the undercuts so that the part can be ejected. And you're thinking to yourself, okay no big deal right you go back and update the cad model and notify the electrical and optical engineering team of these changes they freak out because the one degree draft angle is going to affect the optical performance and because you modify the undercut slightly the components on the pcb board have to be moved around to prevent collision this is just one example of how not knowing dfma can cause a huge chain reaction and significant significantly delay a project. In some extreme cases, new tooling even has to be completely remade because the product design engineer fully neglected manufacturability when designing parts. This is a company's worst nightmare because it's a double whammy that's both extremely costly and time consuming. So hopefully by this point in the video, I've convinced you enough of the importance of DFMA and it's something you'll consider from the get-go when designing parts, whether you're a mechanical engineer or engineering student. Don't wait until the mid to late stages of the product development process for suppliers to review your designs. If you're a student, have another pair of eyes like a machinist, critique your designs as early on as possible and frequently to get their expert opinion. Now, as mechanical engineers, we don't just work in silos designing parts all day. Believe it or not, we do interact with people from all walks of life, including other engineers, marketing, sourcing, regulatory, management, suppliers, and customers. That's why communication might just be as critical as DFMA, even though it's a soft skill. Effectively conveying complex ideas to your team and technical information to non-technical people is not easy, but it will enable you to get notice at work and streamline your career progression. Now, communication isn't just about speaking. It could mean writing clear and concise emails and crafting engaging presentations, frequently working in groups, giving a lot of presentations, and taking a public speaking course as a student will help you become a better communicator. Another soft skill that's rarely talked about but is so crucial is creativity. A huge part of a mechanical engineer's job is to innovate and come up with design ideas and solutions to challenging problems on the fly. A recent survey of 1500 CEOs conducted by IBM indicated creativity as the top skill to have for business leaders. The good news is creativity can be developed over time as the science shows by simply doing things you love. It could be anything from reading a book, playing an instrument, painting, exercising, to playing games. One of my favorite creativity boosters is taking any object around me and drawing different views of it on a piece of paper, similar to how mechanical engineers create technical drawings using CAD software. So there you have it. DFMA, communication, and creativity are the top three skills that benefited me the most as a mechanical engineer. Once I mastered these skills, I received more job offers, my career progressed faster, and I loved my job more. Of course, there are a lot more skills that are needed to succeed in industry, along with a little luck and strategy. Now, before I end this video, I just want you to know that wherever you are in your career, it doesn't matter if your boss says you're successful or if a performance review says you're successful. What matters most is if you think you're successful and the work that you do serves the overall picture you have for your life. Many engineers, including myself, work so hard at huge personal expense to get that next big promotion only to feel entirely empty once they got it. So never only focus on achievement, but instead fulfillment because success without fulfillment is simply failure. So always remember that your health is your wealth because nothing, including your family, friends, job titles, how much money you have in a bank will matter if you don't have good health. So never value your work above your life. And if your employer doesn't like you, just leave and find one that does. All right, guys, that's it for today. As always, thank you so much for watching. And if you found this video helpful, be sure to smash the subscribe button and check out my video here where I share some other skills that mechanical engineers must know. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.